to another episode of MNPR Soundcheck. And today we are on with Pablo van der Poel from The Wolf. Hi, mom. Hi. <laughs> I'm on TV. Yeah, we're on YouTube and TV. Yes. Man, thank you very much for having us. Yeah, man. Thanks for having me on the show. Okay. Yeah, it was amazing. Awesome. Yeah, it's cool. It's cool. Let's talk about gear. Yeah, I love yeah, talking yeah, about oh, gear. Yeah, like, <laughs> don't, there's one thing better than talk about gear. Buying gear, yeah. Uh, yes. No, I like talking about gear. Uh, yes, more. I like it more. Because you can say stuff like, I would love to one day maybe have. Maybe. And yeah. you can talk about gear. That's that's beyond reach. Like, Just one day I play yeah, that guitar. 59 less fall. Oh, yeah. I don't have one, but I'd love to have one. We can, we can talk about it. This is cool. Yeah. Firebird. Yeah, this is a Firebird. Um, actually, the story starts with another Firebird. I'll show that in a minute. Okay. Uh, which has been my main guitar for like over 10 years. Nice. I bought it second hand but it was like in mint condition and now it looks like a 60 year old instrument uh, uh, and after, after having played that for many years i figured i'm a firebird man uh, my number one guitar would be a vintage firebird so one month ago finally after finally. Uh, after many many years i was able to uh buy this 65 Whoa. uh reverse firebird 3 uh, from a friend of mine because I played it at his place, and I was like, "This is the most amazing guitar I've ever played." I and he that. said, "I know, uh, but I will. I will never sell this guitar." Uh -huh. And then uh, a little bit later, he got in because he's also a vintage guitar guitar dealer. Uh -huh. He got in a, a Firebird Seven, and I texted him saying, "Like, what if you keep the seven and sell me the three? Yep. And he was like, "Ha ha 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 ha." Uh -huh. A couple of days later, he said, "I'll think about it." A couple of days later, he uh, sold it to me. Nice, so this guitar man. had the bottom half break off at one point, like a long time ago, in the 70s probably. And um, Oh, the crazy 70s, yeah. Yeah, the crazy <laughs> 70s. And uh, probably the headstock at some point broke, uh, but very early on in its history. So it was sent back to Gibson. Okay. And they replaced this whole part and put on a left-handed headstock. Oh. This is the wrong way around. Like, check out... You should check out the other Firebird, and then uh -huh. you'll see um, the other Firebird has... Well, it's, it's fun to see the difference. You see that? Yeah, it's... This is normal. Oh. This is not normal. Um, yeah, that's, that's a, oh, this is a beautiful guitar. I mean, I love this one, uh -huh. and I will forever cherish it, and I, I ruined it, as you can see. Because, like I said, when I bought it, it was brand new. Uh huh. Um, but it's it's it shows that it's been played. Yeah. It's yeah. Now, it's like happy days. I rough, I will forever cherish this one. But this one is this is something else. Yeah. And I've been playing this one on this uh, tour for the first time, really. And I've nice. been playing it every show, all show, and it's uh, it's amazing. Can we hear a little bit of both? Yeah, of yeah. course, of course. Uh, Do you want me? Yeah. Maybe uh, Richard here can hold. Ladies and gents, Richard. <laughs> this is interesting. So, let me see. I'll uh, play it clean then so yeah. we can all hear the difference. And I'll tune it first because I got to say, when I use that Maestro tremolo, it instantly goes out of tune. Um. <laughs> Neck pickup. Wow, that's pretty cool. This is just the amp. Uh, this is just the amp, yeah. Wow. And this, uh, well, this is the non vintage one. Okay. Is it an open D? Okay. Uh, e, a G, I mean. G. Yeah, uh, so it's a different tuning, but. Uh, this sounds so cool. What do you think? They both sound great, yeah. but that one has something That's... I don't know, it's hard to describe. It's uh -huh. it's brighter, but it also has more air. Uh-huh. And you hear it when you play them acoustically. That okay. like this one sounds 
okay acoustic but it also sounds like there's a little plastic layer over the sound and that one just sounds like a free bird okay <laughs> free uh, pirate uh yeah, yeah so this is the other like for this tour it's been degraded to the open g guitar oh, uh man. so i'm using that most of the show and then uh this one is just for open g now uh, you that's play? because I forgot to bring many guitars on tour. Oh, you forgot. Yeah, we unloaded the van before we went on tour. I forgot that. I oh. thought my guitars were still in the van, oh, but they weren't. No. So, <laughs> yeah. so usually you travel with how many guitars? Five. Five. Yeah, so these three, and then uh, I have an Epiphone uh, 65 or 67 Beautiful. Olympic, which is great for Open G, uh -huh. and I have a, a Flying V as a backup for that Epiphone. Okay, cool. Yeah. And it, do you change, do you have a specific guitar for any specific songs or like it's... There's like one like or two roots. songs in the in the set that I specifically want to play on the Les Paul. Uh -huh. And uh, all the other songs, I just, you know, I, I, I don't like switching guitars okay. in a show. So I keep that to a, a minimum. Nice. Yeah. Cool. Uh, yeah, can we... You want to see the Les Paul? Yeah, let's, of course. I'm a Les Paul guy, so... Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Uh, this uh, this one has a cool story to it too. Nice. Um, so back in the Netherlands, uh, there's a Gibson uh, 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 um, office. Okay. Like, and these guys are great. I've been in touch with them uh, for a long, long time now. And they uh, they lend guitars to artists, okay. right? Okay. So I once borrowed this guitar, this very one, uh -huh. and I fell in love with it. And I said, "Oh, I want to buy this guitar from you because it's it's the ultimate." And they said, sorry, we cannot sell it to you. You can buy another one, a new oh, one, one, but not this specific one. So I was bummed out and I went out and uh, bought another one. Um, a Wadi Wachtel Les Paul, like a collector's choice, blah, blah, blah. Okay. I got a great deal on it, but still I couldn't afford it. So I paid half of the guitar and then monthly I would pay. Oh, pay a little bit more. And uh, every show that I did with it, I was thinking like, is this guitar worth like all this money that I can't spend on it? And sometimes it was. It was a great guitar. I I, re I forever regret selling it. So fast forward, I sold it okay. because I just couldn't live with the, the thought of uh, having such an expensive guitar, knowing that I would never probably own a Les Paul because, you know, this one I can buy and the other one is too expensive. Uh -huh. And then a couple of weeks later, we played uh, on a party, a Gibson party, okay. when the new uh, CEO was, was there, okay. uh, Caesar. And uh, JC Curley at that time, mm -hmm. and um, Caesar, uh, who's now the CEO, he jammed with us. And um, after the show, he was like, "Yeah, that was great, and it was a fun night." Right. And he said, "Which Gibson guitar would you love to have?" So I thought, "What does he mean? Does it mean like yeah, half, like tonight?" Like half, yeah. So I said, "Well, that guitar there, and it was this one. Uh -huh. uh, I I'm in love with that one, but they told me I couldn't buy it." And then he just took it off the wall, and he said. She's yours now. No way. Yeah. So I finally got uh yeah, my dream guitar. So, so you can't buy that guitar because it's yours. Like yeah. they, they gave me like Yeah, that's it's insane. Amazing. That's yeah, insane. and uh, I did change some things about it. I put the Bixby on. The Bixby. Uh, I changed the pickups for throwbacks. Uh you know, they were wound on the original uh Lisona machine that Gibson had in the fifties that they okay. made the PAFs on. So this is as close to a vintage pop you as you can get, uh -huh. and I changed the tuners. Tuners, yeah, and I always and change the pots. The pots well, yeah. on my <laughs> I do that on every guitar. Also, did it on the vintage Firebird because I cannot well, work you... with audio taper pots. Oh, really? They're a pain in the ass. Okay. Yeah, if you want to, like, what I do is I use a fuss all the time, and, so and that's how I go from clean to distorted. And uh -huh. with the lock pots, all the action is between eight and ten. Exactly. I don't know why. I don't okay. understand how people can play like that, but I can't, and so I change them. The pots as for well. linear mm -hmm. pots. Oh, yes. So on this tour, there was a show. Like during the sound check, I had the vintage Firebird on a bench with soldering iron. Okay. Uh, working on this vintage guitar was kind of I felt a little uh, <laughs> sacrilegious, but <laughs> it is what it is. Needs to needs to fit the purpose. Yeah, it's like yeah. if you prefer. True, and also uh, on vintage Firebirds, I didn't know this before. This is the neck volume, like like on a Les Paul. Okay. But this is the bridge volume. No way. So during the show on the new on the vintage Firebird, uh -huh. the first couple of shows I was playing and and and, and 
the I thought I was dialing in the bridge fine, but this was the neck tone. Oh no. <laughs> yeah, so I also changed that around. Uh-huh. Yeah. I didn't know that. The... No, me neither. It was when I played this guitar for the first time, I was like, why is everything weird? It's all firebirds that way? Uh vintage firebirds, yeah. Oh really? Oh vintage yeah. firebirds. Cool. Yeah. Can we talk about pedals? Of course, definitely. Um, so like I said, like I use a fuzz all the time. Uh-huh. And I thought, why not bring a couple of fuzzes? Okay. Uh, so I have an Isle of Tone He 65, which sounds like this. It's got a I got a Lux 64, which is actually uh, like a replica of a Honer um uh like a treble booster overdrive okay and i have uh, a vintage uh, 1968 yen uh, tone banner tone band. which is like a fox tone banner but uh-huh. branded differently but this is like with the volume on five on if five. i open it up it's <laughs> Pretty gnarly, uh, gnarly first sound, but you can do everything with it from very clean to so just volume and, and, and your bass. This sounds so good. Yeah, I know. I, I love it wow. too. And then I have one uh, pedal that's uh, it's just the octave section of an octave fuzz. Okay. And then I combine it with with the with the Isle of Tone Hayes sixty five, mm-hmm. and that sounds pretty cool too. Um, <laughs> And the cool thing about an octopus is you can play major chords with it. Uh, you can play minor chords with it. Whoa! Yeah. <laughs> so that's uh, something to keep in mind. That's I don't know why it has to do with, like, I don't know. Um, I don't know how they call it in English, but okay. it's overtones, I guess. Okay. Um, so one of these fuzzes is always on. Always on. And mostly the Lux. That's like my standard sound, I guess, because it can get the cleanest and the. And the brightest um then i have a wawa rmc it's very it's a little noisy i okay. have to get that checked out but uh it sounds pretty good um, yeah it's, it's very noisy. vocals yeah yeah it has a, a very nice mid-range uh, uh-huh. Um, and then next in line is uh, like an envelope filter, Ottawa. Okay. It's also very noisy, so I have to put it in a in a loop. Okay. Uh, but it's a cool pedal. Yeah. Wow. You can use it like for very cool extreme effect. <laughs> <laughs> it's a cool thing. Um, the jam pedals, uh, harmonic tremolo. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Oh, yeah. And this one, I can't really sh- Oh, I can. Uh, Hector, the DI. Can I do that? So I have a switch in here. Okay. Which uh, sends everything that comes before it to this uh, Greer Amp Soma pedal. Uh-huh. Which kind of emulates. It's like an analog emulation of a Fender Brownface amp mm. into a DI. Okay. So you can only hear it through the PA system. PA. And it sounds like, uh, you know, like, like a guitar plugged straight into a recording console. Okay. Like the... You know, uh, 
Does it work? Almost. Almost. Let's. Uh, <laughs> anticipation's high. Dan. Dan. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, pretty wild. And then you do these? I do this sometimes when it's like, I don't know, uh, I go like... <laughs> Sound. Yeah, and where you're standing right now, it sounds kind of weird. But when you're in the audience, like, it's like it's super extreme and okay. close, no uh, reverb. Uh -huh. um, so that's a cool fact because Not often like... in the studio, uh, I do a lot of recording, and um, I love plugging straight into like a tube, like a, a preamp, and just yeah. cranking it. Uh, it's a very gnarly, a nasty sound. Classic. Yeah, because Solos being guitar speakers, it's especially these vintage greenbacks, uh -huh. they roll off everything like about 4K, okay. 4 kilohertz. And um, this thing is like full range. So you have all those nasty upper frequencies uh, in the mix. And that's that. And then I think the last thing on the board is um, uh, a dual uh, channel spring reverb. Okay. Uh, with an actual spring inside, as you can wow. hear. Uh -huh. So I have one setting that's like light. One that's more heavy. Heavy. I love reverb. I love fuzz and reverb. Really? Always on? Yeah, it's always on. Always on. Uh, that's my, like, I'm, I was at a certain point very influenced by Dan Auerbach from Black Keys. Uh -huh. And he has, you know, back on the old uh, Black Keys records, he had a lot of fuzz and reverb going yeah. on. Uh, like a... <laughs> So, I like it. Cool. Talk about the influences. What do you? What your main influences? Uh, my number one favorite guitar player of all time is Jimmy Page. Jimmy Page. Yeah, that's why I needed the last ball in my okay, life. Okay, so. Yes, I choose. I noticed that wisely. Yeah, <laughs> and then, then especially the and first. And I didn't know uh, that. I didn't know that. Well, that's a not coincidence. That's well, fate. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, especially the first three Led Zeppelin albums. Led Zeppelin. His fuzz is. He's the reason I. I. I've always wanted a Les Paul. Uh -huh. He's the reason I'm using a tone bender, um, and probably the Marshall the suit. The Marshalls. Uh, and then I'm also a big fan of Peter Green. Okay. Um. Paul Kossoff from Free. Oh my God. These are the guys, like when I listen to them, it's like, I think I want to be more like them. Like I want to play less notes, Five more notes. vibrato. Yeah. Uh, but it's, you know, it's always like, you know, it, when you do it yourself, it always turns out differently. Exactly. Yeah. Which is also part of the fun. Uh, I love the wildness of Jimmy Page. Uh -huh. Like a uh, song like, um, and I have uh, I've, the middle position is out of phase on this guitar. Oh, cool. Uh, which is... Like on that song, uh, uh, Since I've Been Loving You. Since I've Been Loving You, Like, yeah. nobody does that when the solo comes. It's so wild. Uh -huh. Like, it's such a beautiful, beautiful, fragile, pretty fragile song. And then the solo comes in and he's like... Smashing it, yeah. Yeah, and I tried like, uh, um, how do you say it? Like, slowing it down, listening what he's doing, but it's like you can't slow it down because it's just like there's a lot of the way he plays and there's notes a lot of in there. Noises and and yeah, it's it weird. Is, he's like he has such an idiosyncratic style, uh, uncopyable. Um, studio for me, he's one of the best. Yeah, he's one of the best. He's on the studio. Yeah. It's what he created, like all the layers of the guitars, yeah, like I think. Yeah, I love that. It's monster. And, um, well, let me think. Well, a lot of guys also, like in recent years, I don't necessarily, when I'm at home, I don't put on like a Led Zeppelin record. Okay. I listen more to like old soul music, Sam Cooke, Otis Redding. Oh my God, they're so good. Yeah, I love that music. And it's not necessarily about the guitar. Uh -huh. uh, but I do like pick up some... Like like a Sam Cooke lick I okay. play. 
Like he does that a lot of times on a, when he's like in C. Uh -huh. um, musical and, and yeah, very vocal. vocal. Yeah. That's kind of stuff I love. Um, yeah, but but mainly my influence is in, with the, the British uh, blues uh, guys when it comes to guitar. Um, yeah. Cool. And amps. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, you, here on top we have oh, uh, yeah. a full tone uh, echo, uh, which is I control with this pedal. You can do cool stuff with it. Um, see. It's a yeah, pretty wild so machine. Cool. Yeah. Do you have, a, have any problems with this on tour, like on, on the road, like, or... If you would like... have spoken to me two months ago, I would have said, no, never. Oh but my in the God. past two months, I've been having some problems with it. Oh, really? It. Yeah, but that's not, that's pretty normal. Like, it's a, uh -huh. it's a, it's, it's very physical, you know, it it is, there's an actual is. tape running. Uh -huh. So it's, you know, it's going to break uh, at some point. At some point. Yeah. But I would say it's uh, it's been pretty reliable uh, for me because I've used it for 12 years, something like that. Wow. Almost without any problems. No. But I have friends who have bought one and it's always broken. Wow. So you got to be lucky. Yeah. I'm a lucky guy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that goes into uh, like a lately uh, split thing. Uh-huh. And then uh, this top amp is a Marshall 1973X. Okay. Which is the 18 watt. 18 um, watt. Blues brig. Yeah, it's got okay. EL84 power tubes, like a Fox AC30. Okay. So it's kind of like, it's not a typical Marshall amp, I would say. Only has two controls, volume and tone. And this is uh -huh. tremolo intensity and uh -huh. speed. Wow, just, yeah. I saw one of this. It's pretty they're, cool. They're amazing amps. Like, it was my favorite amp in the studio. I would use it on, on all of our recordings. Uh -huh. But I couldn't use it live because it wasn't loud enough. Okay. But then we switched to in-air monitoring. And I was like, now I can finally bring my favorite amp. Uh -huh. So I did that for a couple of shows, but I did miss like the baltiness of, uh -huh. a, of a large, higher wattage Because we amp. get used and addicted to that air. You yeah. push it behind us, yeah. I am, yeah. Uh -huh. So that's when I brought my old... I've had this amp for many years and I played this before that one. Uh -huh. uh, this is a 50 watt uh, blues breaker. Blues breaker. Both of them have vintage greenbacks in them. Cool. So 70, uh, 272s, G12Ms. And this one has got a 1967 G12M and a 1970 G12H. So the, the, high, the uh, heavier magnet, mm -hmm. which is uh, not my favorite sound, but mixed together with the M, it's, it's really nice. Are they on all the time, both yeah. amps? Yeah. Cool. When we play larger venues, I have a 50 watt half stack, like a 1987 is the, the like, um, the one that came after the JTM 45. Uh, anyway, uh, and I have a an on off pedal, like oh, a okay. a kill switch basically. So that's my boost. Okay, so you use that as a boost, yeah. solo boost. But normally, all my solo boost is in here. It is in here. Which is perfect. I have this large pedal board, but like most of the show, I'm just standing here with my mic and I can I just control everything here. Uh -huh. It's just like a luxury thing that I'm like, why not bring, why not bring some stuff? And looks cool. Yeah. You think so? And it's, oh, yeah, it looks cool. My favorite sounds... thing is, is, is guitarists that plug straight into the app. Uh -huh. I have like a coily cord running all the way to the back. But... Oh yeah, you. That's not me. You, you have a curly. Yeah. Cord. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, I love this, and I actually I need this because I walk around a lot. I do crazy things. I walk, uh, go into the audience, uh -huh. and um, this one always goes back in shape. You know. It's, okay. It takes up not that much space, but it's actually nine meters long. When wow. I play a normal chord, it drives me crazy, man. It 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 just it coils yeah. up yeah. anywhere. And no way using a, a wireless. Wireless. I thought about that. Yeah. But with the fuzzes, it's a hassle. They need like, oh, yeah. that's also so, why I'm using this uh, loop switcher because they need like no pedal in front of it. Uh huh. Uh, that's when they sound best. And also battery power on my fuzzes. 
That's pretty cool. I never saw one of these. It's super handy because they actually do sound better uh, if they run on battery power. Uh -huh. uh, but then you would have so to unplug them your, every time. So you plug your batteries yeah. and then... That goes to the pedal. That's and cool. when I power off the pedal board, uh, no power goes to the to the fuzzes. So your batteries, they, they last long. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, it's a nice uh, little thing. Awesome. Yeah. Pablo, thank you very much. Thank you, man. Uh, for having us. It was a uh, pleasure. And yeah, I'm looking forward for tonight. Yeah, me too. It's going to be fun. Cool, man. That's it, guys. Thank you so much. Uh, we catch you on the next episode. Cheers. Bye. Man. Awesome, dude. That was amazing. Thank you, man. And great playing. Great, yeah. Thank you. I always get a little nervous if I have to play like on my own in front of a camera, but it's... um. It's uh, it was fun. You're getting used. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. Like and... that's not how I grew up. Like how I grew up was just playing with others. Like that's uh -huh. that's my thing. Like playing together with my brother. And then um, there's a whole generation now, of course, of like these guys that, that just, just play in front of camera. Yeah, yeah, in the bathroom, yeah. and in the, their bedrooms, and like yeah, and they're so good. Like some of these guys, they're fucking insane. Insane. Uh, yeah, I you know I, what I like most is is like playing with others yeah so there's nothing nothing beats like a really good live music when you look at yeah yeah it the, moves like it's one exactly big uh organic thing yeah yeah man thank you very much thank you very much for having I, me on no, this no, wonderful show